Deb Spinster here. Thank you for joining me on my channel today. This is going to be probably a short video. Um, our hearts in the U.S. are broken again. I'm angry. I'm heartbroken. I just don't have it in me to do anything new or very creative today. So I want to review a couple of things. You all seem to be pleased to see that I actually do finish <laughs> some things um, or at least work toward a finish. And again, I, that's not my purpose necessarily in doing this. Sometimes I just like what I've played with enough to want to finish it. Um, having finished objects is not really the point. It's to play with fabric and ideas and see what happens. So it's all about the what if. And sometimes the what if is good. So here are a couple of things. First of all, let me review um, the villages. And this is the first village I worked on, which is just simple blocks of color. Let me zoom in a bit here. But then I am embellishing the roofs and possibly the sky, although that may end up be a, being a quilting embellishment rather than, ooh, big stitch. Big stitch might be good. But this was the first section and I am wanting this to be going up the hillside. So now I have to zoom out again, sorry about this. Going up a mountainside sort of like Sanctaire, I guess. And so it will just wind its way up the mountain. In a minute here, I'll post a photo of this all together so you can see it. I just don't have enough room on this desk. And then continue up the mountain and finally there's one house at the tippy top. A couple of design, design decisions I have made since I last saw you. One is that I left a lot of space here. I trimmed these top portions and some of the bottom portions quite a bit because I thought that I wanted quite a lot of space in between. And then, then I discovered that I don't really, that's too much white space in the wrong place, that I really want these to kind of hug each other as they're going up the mountain. And in fact, I may trim this one down more Pull this back, love steam a seam too, so that this roof overlaps there. That's what happened here between the top one and the one below it, and I really kind of like that. So I may, in fact, trim that down some more. And then on the side, I was going to have a white strip going down the left-hand side, but then I, I realized as I looked at it, that will not look right. It looks like a mountain got sliced in half. <laughs> and you know, I suppose it's possible earthquake or something could have split it. But I really want this just to be um, cut off as if it's, you know, the edge of a photo or something. So I'm not going to have a white strip over here and I've probably got about as much white space as I want over on this side. It's quite narrow down on the bottom tier, but that's okay. So uh, let me show you a photo of this as it's together in sort of one piece, as it will look in one piece. I have not worked on the roofs, the embellishment. I mean, I have, I mean, let me go back. I have not put these all together yet because I think it'll just be easier to do the embellishment on the roofs before I have it all sewed together. It's less to maneuver around the machine. Another thing I realized as I was working on it, when I put the roofs on here, I had them overlapping the houses sometimes quite a bit, and that was just because I decided that's where I wanted them in the design. But then I realized that that gives me possible sort of bleed through or shadowing through from below. 
and then it also gives me that extra thickness when I'm stitching through it. So um, on these, if my design, I allowed it, I put the edge of the roof, I fused it right next to the seam at the top of the roof so that I avoided some of that. And you'll see, I still have a couple of roofs to do here, but that will happen. So that's that village. And next up we have our wild hair in the cabbage patch. And this is what I did the first week or two. <laughs> And this is what I did last week. And if you recall, I'm going to keep this curve when I piece this together, where it may go over here. But of course, now my eye has gotten used to it being over here, so it's probably going to end up over here. <laughs> I may end up with something else down here to make this go together. But we'll see. It could end up just being something pretty wavy at the bottom. I'm beginning to sort of get an idea in my mind for how I want to place this on a background or within a larger composition. And I will share that when it has gelled in my mind a little bit more and maybe I'll do some sketching while I'm at it. So for today, if you remember last week, we did this with the bias binding and this week I was going to do some bobbin work, which I've, I don't know that I've ever done bobbin work before. And I understand the concept and I have the bobbin for it, but I haven't got it in me to try something new today. So what I thought I would think about today is how I could use couching or stitching to do those really thin leaves at the outside of the cabbage. Sorry, I have to grab something. <laughs> and you'll remember I did a little bit of stitching on the bias tape that I made. And you can go back and see my duh Karen moment. <laughs> One of several, actually. So I have this available to me if I want to put that somewhere. I'm not sure that I do because I think that tape is still too wide. Even though I broke it up some with this stitching, it's still, I think, too wide for what's in my head. So I thought I would do something with threads, yarns, whatnot. And I do have this adornments package from EK Success, which I've had for years and years. And in some ways, something like this would be really fun, although I don't need that orange bit in there. But it's just not very cabbagey. Again, this doesn't have to look like a cabbage per se, it was just the inspiration, but somehow in my mind and what I'm seeing, that doesn't fit. This might be okay. It's sort of a, I don't know, a suede, well, it's a kind of a, not really a braid, but, oops, sorry, let me focus there. There we go. And then I have one that's more of a, I don't know, looks more suede-y. I think it's just a darker color. And I could even use this more golden kind of color. Um, this, of course, is a possibility. This is a wool, but it's pretty fuzzy, but it is a good color for it. I've kind of started to go through my stash to, to find things, and it would bend and fold pretty easily, so that's a viable choice. Here is, I don't know what this is. I don't know that it's wool, it might be cotton. Um, and it's kind of a braid effect. It's a little bit, look at it a little closer here. Um, it looks like kind of a, a sort of a braid. It's a, a chained sort of look. And that's, 
kind of cool. It's a little bit too brown. Then I have this pearl cotton in a pretty bright green. Not sure that's what I'm looking for. I'm not batting a thousand here, <laughs> I gotta say. And then I have this white pearl cotton, which of course would bend and mold pretty well. So you know, I have a cotton and a wool so far. Then I also just recently um, ordered this for my friend Lou at the old rusted chair who dyes yarn. And she's got some of this really luscious green in here, which is you know, green and purple and, and teal. It's got all my favorite colors and various shades and, and um, variegations of that green. So I think this will work really well. I bought two skeins, three skeins, two skeins, what did I buy? Three skeins <laughs> to make socks. And I'd, I'll be fine if I use some of it for this project. So, and I definitely want some greens in there. I also in my stash found some silk ribbon that I dyed way back who knows when. Oh, it's a little bit of embroidery floss in there too. So this is a definite possibility. I really like the variegation in that. Um, I might even leave it unironed, unpressed, whatever you want to call it, because that gives it kind of a nice crinkly look. I also have this blue-green but that isn't really what I'm looking for. There's some light green in there that might be okay, but I think it's got too much blue in the color. So it's looking like these are my choices and I can certainly hand stitch them, just you know, needle and thread embroidery kind of thing. And I could couch them on the machine but I think I might be doing them with couching by hand or stitching. Now, whenever I do that, I have to be mindful of how this is going to be quilted because if I do couching by hand, it won't be as flat as I as if I do it um, by machine. And I like that. I would prefer it to not be flattened out but that leaves spaces for a machine either hopper foot on a long arm or your presser foot on a domestic machine to get caught up in that so it would probably be let me think about this it depends on the quilter i guess some long arm quilters <laughs> could handle that pretty easily but it couldn't it would have to be a hand guided thing on domestic machine it would be easier. You, you have more time to react as you see it coming up. But I still think I may couch this by hand. Or I could do silk ribbon embroidery with it, which would be easy enough to do as well. But for the moment, I want to think about just how I would there's a stray strand how I would do this now I would have the option of just sort of laying them down however I think I want them and then putting a very fine tool over it for example and I guess you could do a really no I think organdy would be to now probably be a very fine tool and then that would allow me to just drop it. I mean, I love how this is going. And could I duplicate that? <laughs> I don't know. At the very least, I would take a photo of this and then use that as kind of a guide for what I would do. Let me see if I can pull off some of Lou's yarn here. I just love her stuff. I have about... 80 pairs of socks worth of her yarn waiting for me. She's more efficient at dyeing yarn than I am of knitting socks. All right, so it looks like right off the top, I've got some good greens here, right at the end of the strand. 
So I think that would be kind of fun. There's some hints of darker in there. That doesn't bother me. Now, I also need to think about, do I want to have some of this further down as well to tie it in with that? And do I also want to add some to these other pieces? I'm not sure. I don't think the answer down here is yes, but I think it may be yes on the other pieces. First though, I want to focus on this piece. This is where we're trying it out. And I wasn't going to do this by machine today. If anything, I was going to do it by hand. Part of, of the problem I have doing it by machine is that when I'm on top of just a little section like this, it's hard for me to get in the, the curves that I want. So I could do a little bit of glue basting and give that a try. Um, and you know, these don't have to go edge to edge. In fact, they probably shouldn't. They can sort of come in and out of each other. And I might want to nest them a little closer, at least in spots. Again, I'm not so worried about it looking just like a cabbage because it isn't going to, but having it look right visually. All right, I'm going to start with Lou's yarn here. And thank you, Lou, by the way, for all your lovely dyed yarn. She has an Etsy shop if you're interested. Oh, is it Etsy? I think it is. But if you follow her on Instagram, you can get to her shop from there. All right, so I see that is two rigid. I mean, it, it's curved, but it's like I sat down and decided I would try to do a curve, and that's what happened. I actually sort of like that. Now, and that's probably going to get soda trimmed or something. So I want to try to do that by machine, in which case I need to go get some green thread. Or do I want to couch it by hand? All right, this first one I'll do by machine. I think I may try to, somewhere I have a little pen of glue, or um, what do I want to say? Glue stick, but a, a finer one. And I base that down a little bit before I go to machine because I just know myself well enough that all of a sudden this is gonna start getting more even and straight and meh. So I am on my way down to find some thread and see if I can find that glue stick and return to you shortly. The glue stick wasn't any help, so never mind. I just didn't wing it. <laughs> I chose just a simple zigzag stitch, quite narrow. I was trying to walk a line between having it secure enough that feet on machine weren't going to catch it and flattening it too much and it's all right but I'm not really happy with it I'm, I'm not sad enough that I'm going to take it out but it's not really the kind of look that I was going for it gives it kind of a um, chain linked look because of the zigzag and I used a dark sort of celery color. I think you can probably see it here. And that affected the color of the yarn that I was couching. So it's a possibility. Not sure it's my first choice. I also should have put some stabilizer on it. Sorry, my brain just 
is not working well today. Um, so I think next I want to try just a, a wavy line of, I think, white. And it may cross over this. It may kind of hug it and then go away. I don't know exactly. I'm just going to get on there and do it with one of my favorite modern stitches, which I don't know how well it's going to make these curves, but we'll see. And I will put stabilizer under it for that. And here is my funky modern stitch. I like it. It is funky because you can see places where it is off from, well, like right here, it's perfect. Here, the stitches aren't quite lined up because I'm turning it to make the curve. And sometimes I hit the right point to turn it and sometimes I don't. It's all right, it doesn't bother me. This is all funkiness anyway. Definitely better with some stabilizer under it, of course. I haven't pressed this because I had Emily plugged in earlier and then unplugged her because I thought I was finished with pressing, but pressing will help this a bit too. So that gives it kind of a, a nice texture up there. I think I might also do one that is that cross stitch that I like. Then I'm going to hand couch this. I'm not sure I'll couch it. This is pretty narrow ribbon. This is probably eighth, eighth of an inch. And I will, I want to leave it wrinkled like this, which will maybe make me look sloppy, but I think that's kind of the texture I want. And then if, and I'll just, I'll stitch it down the middle, I tack it down the middle, but with small enough stitches that a, a presser foot isn't gonna get caught under it. It might catch the edge of it and fold it over, but that wouldn't be a crisis as far as I'm concerned. I think that would be pretty cool. I just like it scrunched up and unironed like that. I think it's just what I want there. And then I may try some big stitch with this five pro cut. Five, yes, this is Blanc. And I may also try to track down something that's a little creamier kind of color to introduce that a little bit into here as well. I'm still uncertain about doing any of this down here. I think I don't want that. Down here I have these sort of crisscrosses, these slots in the <laughs> stadium checkers. And I think that will be fine, I think. Although I may end up doing some big stitches going out that way. I don't know. Did I do that before or after I quilt? There is part of the quilting. Uncertain of that as of today, but I think I will go ahead and do a the cross stitch thing here and then probably call it a day, but let me do that first and I'll come back. Here's the cross stitch. This is even less curvy than <laughs> On the other stitch, it adds some texture, and that's good. I've got a line that's a long straight line because I was trying to deal with some fullness in here. And I just wasn't focusing on the curve so much. I think what I want to try to do is just some simple straight stitches that will be more curvy and follow this better as I'm thinking about the cabbage. And one of the things that I like about the cabbage design-wise, thank you, Mother Nature, is all of that convolution stuff going on in the outer leaves. So I think I will try some, just some straight stitches. So I lied to you when I said <laughs> that would be it for this week, but I do want to try just one or two of straight stitches and then I'll come back and then that will be it for this week. And you'll hear Emily, I did decide to plug her in to wake her up again and let her do some work here. 
So I did a couple of straight line or straight stitch lines. This was my uh, standard stitch length, default stitch length, which is 2.5. And it's just easier to do curves if it's a shorter stitch. So this is, I think, 1.5. I also did this little loop-de-loopy -loop thing, which looks out of place at the moment, but I think it won't later on. I'm going to be doing more loop-de-loop -loop with the silk ribbon and probably with some big stitches. It's, it's pretty inelegant. <laughs> in this machine stitching, but I think I can do better with hand stitching. Not really thrilled with this crossing over here, but I can live with it. Who knows where this is going to wind up on top of all of this anyway. So that is it for what I'll do on this piece today. And I'm liking it. Let me know what you think what your ideas would be for adding things up here. I will work some more on this hopefully this week and report back next week. And I'll see if I get anything more done on the villages as well. Next week, I think I want to start something different again. Eh, kind of scrappy. Maybe not. I don't know. But some design funky thing next week. I will note that some of you may have noticed if you happened across my channel or it, it showed up in your suggested feed that I'm also doing a floss tube channel now, which is not related to this. Um, it's quite a bit different actually. I'm doing mostly needle point and cross stitch in that, but I will bring in some of my quilting pieces from time to time. It's no demos, no teaching. It's just, for one thing, I'm not really qualified to teach in <laughs> needle pointing cross stitch, to be honest to you. Um, and it is just a chance to show what I'm working on, things that I finished, things that I have in the pipeline in the stash ready to be stitched. So it's a whole different thing. Don't worry. It doesn't, it's not replacing what I'm doing here. I will give up floss tube before I give up the quilting channels. So I hope you'll join me there if you're interested in other kinds of stitching. Occasionally there will be some quilting on it, but not necessarily on a regular basis. And I'm doing that every two weeks, I think probably. And with that, that's it for today. Um, I will see you next week. Thank you for joining me. Subscribe and like, please, if you have not done that. Um, I will see you next week. In the meantime, be well. Please, God, be safe. Be happy. Be quilting. 